I have noticed such a huge wave of Enochian studies that have come into the church as of late. There's just been a tremendous in, uh, interest in the church of the story in the book of First Enoch. You know, who are the Watchers? Who are the Nephilim? Who are the Anakim? Who are the Giants? What was Enoch? He was and he wasn't. What's happening with this guy? Uh, and, you know, these things are really fascinating, and partly because we're told in the end days will be as the days of Noah. Well, the book of First Enoch is as of the days of Noah. It seems to unpack the story of Genesis 6, 1 through 5, and it gives us some clarity to it. But not only in Genesis 6, 1 through 5 uh, describes what happens at First Enoch, uh, but seemingly Daniel, the book of Daniel, uses the same terminology as First Enoch in uh, the form of the Watchers, who are the heavenly beings who fall down to earth and have relations with the daughters of men, and out of them come the line of the giants. Uh, we see the same thing in uh, both Jude and Second Peter, the description of these beings and their punishments. Uh, and there seems to be other allusions all through Scripture, through the book of Revelation, through the Gospels, uh, uh, through Corinthians, that seem to imply uh, that, that there were a lot of things in the book of First Enoch, in those writings, that are true. Now, that doesn't mean the whole book is true, but the Bible certainly affirms that some of those things are true. And if you'd like a, a teaching on where I stand on whether it should be canonized or not, and I don't think it should, but I can unpack why, um, you know, I, I can do that. But, you know, as, as we become so interested in who this character is and what the Bible affirms out of this book, we have to make sure we don't fall into the trap that the church has fallen, fallen into historically, and that to debate over these things and war over these things. And so what I want to do is take two examples out of the teachings of First Enoch that the Bible affirms is true. What the Bible says is true out of First Enoch uh, that we can immediately glean from and grow from. And remember, remember that the days of Noah will be as of the, uh, will, the last days will be as the days of Noah. And so here are two very practical warnings for the church taken out of what the Bible affirms out of First Enoch, that's the story of the days of Noah. The first one is rebellion. You cannot read the story of the Watchers without seeing rebellion. People that rebelled against God's order and came down and, and had disorder as, they, they, as these heavenly beings slept with the daughters of men. And it's rebellion. And so way, the, a way for the church to keep themselves from rebellion is to stay missionally minded. God has given us a task like he gave the watchers, and we need to be deadly serious about how we keep our task. We're called to go into all the world and proclaim and to make disciples, and, and we need to stay missionally minded. And if we do, it will, we'll notice our sin slowly start to get less and less. And the second one is lust. You cannot read the story of First Enoch without seeing lust interwoven through it. It took beings in front of the very throne room of God and said, mm, I'd rather have sex. And what a warning to the church. We must stay pure. We must resist these things and fight against these things and, and remove ourselves from temptation because lust is a very powerful thing and it can absolutely derail your world. It resulted in the flooding of the whole earth we see in Genesis 6. And so... You want, to, you want to know more about Enoch, you want to dive into what that story is, then be deadly serious about abstinence from sin and deadly serious about holiness to God. Thanks, guys.